Hey guys, welcome back to the off-season uh, Arizona Cardinals franchise episode, I guess. Uh, so, first things first, free agents. Uh, I never liked paying kickers or punters, even when they're as high as Matt Hawk and Alder Grosshuss right now. Like, they're both pretty high for how young they are and how good they are. But I'm not going to be paying them. It's just something I don't do. Everybody else, I don't really feel like paying. Uh, Larry Fitz apparently did retire, so we don't even have to worry about re-signing him. And Tawan Taylor, I just don't think is good enough. I think we can definitely find a speed guy in free agency. Uh, OJ Howard is technically back from his injury. So that's cool. I don't know if anybody else is. They should all be. Yeah, they are. Uh, so I don't really plan on re-signing anybody. I just don't see the point of re-signing any of these guys, so let's move on. If you've ever watched my uh, Miami Dolphins or a rebuild that I've done on the channel, I don't go out and I don't contest a lot of these big signings. I don't go out and try to like beat these guys out and be like, hey, I'm going to take this guy. He's going to be mine. We're going to use him. He's going to be great. No, that's not what I do. I go after guys that are either A, not getting any contract offers, or B, are just cheap in general. Uh so, for example, Drew Brees would be cool, but we don't need him. So, like, I'll go after Teddy B Bridgewater, Bortles, Tannehill, Fitzpatrick, Mullins, Griffin. I'll go after some of these guys, throw out some offers, see if we can get somebody for the cheap, for our backup, as Brent Hundley's left us. So, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go ahead, make some offers real quick, and I'll let you guys know what we are going with. Okay, so I am finally done negotiating with people. Now we just have to simulate weeks to, you know, figure out if they sign. We're going after a lot of people. Now, number one, we can only go after about 25 people because we only have 50 people left on the roster. I did have to go in, release a couple people. So people like Devante, Dante Foreman, he was our fifth running back. I understand now what you're saying. It's probably like, why are you going after Tim Hunt then? Halfbacks are good in this game. I'd like to get a couple of them. If Joe Mixon can't step up, hopefully Kareem Hunt can. Type of attitude. Uh, Eddie, the defensive tackle that we had on the practice squad, he got released, and I think a corner got released as well, and then that's about it, and then we had to go back through and renegotiate with a couple people, but other than that, we're only spending, what is that, 20 mil-ish, give or take, and these are all 550k contracts, so, we're going after plenty of people, uh, there are people that we don't technically need that I'm still going after. There are people that we do need that I am should go after harder, but it doesn't really matter. A lot of these top-end guys here, besides probably Rosas, we do not really need. Bulaga is probably the biggest need out of all of them, and if he doesn't sign this week, then I might come back and like give him a one-year deal worth like six mil and just be like, screw it, we're just going to get a good tackle for a year, and hopefully we can play a little bit better. So... I'll let you guys know at the draft who we signed. So looking at free agency, we did get probably the more, one of the most important pieces of free agency that we needed to bring back was Aldrich Rosas. Uh, we brought in Doran Howard, Zach Brown, Robert Quinn, Matt Hawk, Levi Wallace, Trent Murphy, Kamir Gruger hill Jeff Heath, DJ Humphreys, Damar Dotson, Cordell, Skura, Matt Skura, uh, Greg Robinson, Eric Murray, Auden Tate, and Nick Mullen. Which is awesome because now we have because we got we brought in our backup QB we brought in our kicker and punter another cornerback some backup ends some backup linebackers some tackles that we could work out I know Greg Robinson is facing 20 years in prison now and DJ Humphreys I know we got rid of last year but okay he was getting paid almost 10 mil a year well his cap hit was about 10 mil a year when we traded him we now have him for 550k a year until he's 30 when he starts regressing. Damar Dotson on a one-year deal as well. Uh, just some good overall pieces. Wide receiver could have used a little bit more help. I wish some of these negotiations would have went through, like DJ Moore, Robinson, Higgins. Collins would have been a nice one. Bridgewater, Davis, and Flowers also would have been all nice pieces as well. Let's hop into the draft. Okay, so I forgot to show this at the beginning of the episode. We're going to go through stats real quick. I don't know if I went through them at the end of the last week, but we are going through them now. So, Kyler Murray through for 4,500 yards. Pretty good on 62 completions. Not the greatest. Would like it more around 67, 68. 
So it's not terrible, but we do have to. But after those rocky starts, I think he played very well. He threw 27 interceptions, which was terrible, but he threw 30 touchdowns. He almost had a Jamin, Jameis Winston year. Uh, rushing, Joe Mixon did not have a bad year, but slowly regressed as the year basically went on. Uh, Jordan Howard was not on the team. The team Grant and Jamal Williams both had decent years. Jamal Williams, you may be looking at and being like, no, he didn't. He only had 3.9 yards of carry on 121 yards. Near the end of the season, he was actually having pretty good yards for how many carries he was getting. So, that's not bad. Andy Isabella went off. I mean, he's just amazing. He's fast. He's quick. And he just seems to hold on to a lot more than everybody else does. Uh, Christian Kirk was also a very good target. O.J. Howard was our old reliable, even though in the last game he only picked up, what was it, like four yards on one catch because he got injured. Dalton Schultz was an awesome piece at the beginning of the year, was playing very well. His average went down over the year because he only got maybe like 10, 15 receptions near out of like 14 games or so. So, not terrible. Joe Mixon, decent out of the backfield. Auden Tate, a good year as well after not starting until like week like 12 or 11. Hakeem Butler was good, but he just had route running issues and couldn't seem to get open. John Ross was decent. Keyshawn was good, but just couldn't seem to get open as well. And when he did, he didn't have the greatest hands. Uh, we're just going to have to focus on trying to find our pieces, I guess, as we only look at offense for some reason. Uh, offensive line, now you're going to look at the numbers and be like, wow, but in reality, it wasn't actually that bad. Uh, these two guys were our tackles. They played fucking terrible. Some of it was on us. Some of it wasn't. Billy Price actually had a pretty good year compared to Ali Marpat and Quentin Nelson, at least in the pass game. Buda Baker, Jerome Baker, and Hassan Reddick all led our team with tackles with over 120 for each of them, which is insane. Tackles for a loss, Hassan Reddick, Jerome, Rashawn Gary, Buda Baker, Nichols, Yawan Bentley, and Brian Murphy all had double-digit tackle for losses. Sacks. Chase Winovic had 16 and a half after starting late for us. He went off. I mean, Green, yes, a lot, uh, probably about eight of them were probably about like the uh, double A gap blitz that we kept sending, but it's whatever. Uh, Rashawn Gary, uh, Thomas, Baker, and Nichols all had decent years as well in the sacks, especially how young they are. Jerome Baker, Buda Baker, Josh Jackson, Yawan Bentley, Pat Pete all have more than three picks. And then Hassan Reddick, Brian Murphy, Jeff Keith. Jeff Keith wasn't on the team. CGJ, Levi Wallace. Nope, Levi was not on the team. Deontay Thompson and Blake Cashman all had picks as well. So, good looking there. Force fumbles. We had a grand total of four, six, seven. We only recovered one, two, three, four, five, six, six. Looks like it. So, not bad. I don't know why I moved back to blocking. Uh, let's scroll over again. Safeties, we had one by Chase Winovic at the end of the year. And then touchdowns, two for Baker, two for Peterson, one, another one for Jerome Baker, one for Sean Reddick, one for Josh Jackson, one for Yawan Bentley, and one for Blake Cashman. I'm surprised Peterson even had... I mean, he did have that one, like, gimme touchdown, but I don't remember the other one. I'll have to go back and look. Uh, Rosas only missed one field goal. His longest was a 62. He missed two extra points. One of them was blocked, so I only missed a grand total of two kicks. Not bad for Rosas. Matt Hawk had a, an amazing year at an average of 58 yards per punt almost, but with, like, touchbacks and stuff, his net average did go down to 49.3. Eight inside of the 20 and seven touchbacks, so... His longest was a 90, so. He did miss nine games of the year. He only has nine games played. That's not correct. That's weird. Okay. I mean, he did miss some time, though, so. We had a bunch of people returning kicks. Uh, Corey Grant should be on this list as well, but we did get rid of him at the near the end of the season. Uh, he was just not working out for us. I think the biggest thing is John Ross or Jakeem Grant is going to be returning, as well as Cordell Patterson will be thrown into the net. Uh, punt return, I think Jakeem Grant will take that back over. He was playing very well before his injury, so. That's it for stats. Uh, yearly awards. The only thing we'll probably be in the running for is uh, Offensive Rookie of the Year. So. Uh, offensive Player of the Year. 
yeah, no, nobody. Defensive Player of the Year, Hassan Reddick with two, Jerome Baker at five, Buda Baker at seven, not bad. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Murray Isabella round out the top two, and then Keyshawn at number nine, Chase Winovic at number one for Defensive Rookie of the Year, Byron Murphy, Rashawn Gary at five and six, and CVJ at ten, so not bad at all. Actually, I want to see if Rosas won Kicker of the Year. He didn't win Kicker of the Year. What did Graham Gano kick? He only missed three total kicks. You have to be kidding me. Gano had to miss less than two then. He missed two field goals and an extra point. And one of them was blocked. Okay, so he missed out on a grand total of seven points. Rosas missed out on a grand total of five points. Now, if you take both their blocks away, Rosas only missed out on four points. He missed out on six. Therefore, we still fucking win, and he had a longer percentage. He hit a longer field goal. Rosas should win that. So we are sitting at number five, number six, and I think a couple other numbers. I think we're sitting at eight and ten as well. So we have plenty of picks inside the top ten. Uh, the only person I'd really be willing to trade up for is Chase Young, but I think we're kind of fine there, especially with other people like Grant Delpit available, A.J. Epineza, uh, some corners as well, some wide receivers. I think we're fine. Uh, so we're just going to wait until our picks, I think. I'd love Jerry Judy as well. I'd love one of the tackles even. We're just going to have to wait and see. Okay. So it's time. Uh... Here's my thought process. Andrew Thomas is good. I love him. Don't get me wrong. But Jerry Judy, Jeffrey Okuda, Grant Delpit are all sitting here. And then, like, even our fourth person could be, like, a C.D. Lamb or a, like, or a Trevon Diggs or even Andrew Thomas if he's still there. Like, God. Uh, I want to make a decision. We're going Jerry Judy here. I think he's the best pick. We need a wide receiver. I think he's it. He's a 79 overall hidden development. Number two in the class. Took him at number five. We'll take it. We already saw the number one go off in Chase Young. He went number two to the Raiders. So we've had to trade up quite a bit. Kind of want to go Jeffrey Akuda here. But I'm going to look at the team real quick. I have made my decision. We're going with Jeffrey Okuda. He is a 77 overall. Number 8 in the class. He took him at number 6. It's whatever. I'll take him. I'm going to skip the Niners pick. They go Derek Brown. So Thomas is still there. Delpit is also still here. We have two picks left. And then we don't pick until the 8th pick in the second round. So we have to make these two picks count. I would love C.D. Lamb, but we don't need another wide receiver. I say we go Andrew Thomas. Hope Grant Delpit doesn't fall. Well, well, hopefully Grant Delpit does fall. And then we take him with the next pick. Which is exactly what we're doing. We're doing it. Andrew Thomas, 78 overall, number 5 in the class. We took him at number 8. Please don't take him. They take Epineza. Grant Delpit is still there. Welcome to the team, young fella. He is a 78 overall, number 10 in the class. We took him at number 4. He's number 4 in the class. We took picked him at number 10. See you guys in the second round. With this pick, we are going Jerry Drudy's brother, basically, from Alabama. Another wide receiver, 6 foot, 21 years old, 190, deep threat, Henry Ruggs. He's a 75 overall with hidden, number 18 in the class. We took him at number 40. Now we have a bunch of fifth round picks. I think I'm going to trade up into the second or third round and try to take an offensive lineman so all our fifths might be gone as well as a player from the team. With this trade, we are trading Justin Evans, a backup safety at best off the practice squad, and two fifth rounders to the Bears for their second. 
We are going with Ben Brendanson here, uh, offensive guard, 72 overall, number 54 in the class. We drafted him at, at 42. I'll take it. It's not a terrible pick. He'll go ahead and compete with Billy Price for that starting guard spot. With this pick, we are trading Tez Tabor in a fifth-round pick for a number two from the Chiefs of this year. With this pick, he is too good to pass up Jordan Love out of Utah State. With this pick, I mean with this trade, we are trading away Alex Redman for a, and a fourth round for a third round. If I didn't announce the last pick for some reason, I took uh, Jordan Love. So, Okay. So, other than the picks that you were shown, this last one, the third rounder that I traded for, for the Bengals, yeah, it was supposed to be uh, Chase on from LSU. I went to go push user pick, and it sends right past it. Apparently, it glitched out, and it thought it was on my pick. So, yeah. I traded a pick before. I normally try to trade a pick before than what I want to trade at, actually, because then it gives you, like, because then it just, then you're safe, no matter what, if it glitches. Apparently it glitched, it gave, me, it gave me a decent player out of Utah State, but it did not give me the guy I wanted, which was Chase On. Uh, so that's not great. Uh, other than that, we had a, fata a fantastic draft with Jerry Judy, Jeffrey Akuda, Andrew Thomas, Grant Delpit, Henry Ruggs, Ben Brendanson, and Jordan Love. These guys are fucking young, too, like one, two, three. Three, four are 20 years old, one's a 21-year-old, and then three of them are 22. And the three that are 22 are like the in-the-box type of guys, which, which is fucking crazy to me. What an amazing draft from us. Meet the newest wide receiver, probably starting wide receiver, Jerry Judy, number 14, out of Alabama, 6'1", 192, 20 years old. Jeffrey Okuda, or, yeah, I think it's Jeffrey or Jeffrey Okuda. He'll be wearing number 27 for now. Cornerback from Ohio State. He'll probably be starting as well. 6'1", 201, 21 years old. Andrew Thomas, left tackle, number 75, out of Georgia. Meet Grant Delpit, strong safety, number 29, out of LSU. Meet Henry Ruggs out of Alabama, number 11, wide receiver, 6 foot, 190. Ben Brendanson, number 74, right guard out of Michigan. This is Jordan Love out of Utah State, number 3, quarterback, backup quarterback. And this is this motherfucker, Tippa Galea, or whatever the fuck his name is. Don't care about him, probably going to get cut, or traded. Okay. So, uh, I went ahead, went through some of the positions, changed some people around, move them to either side, move them to back to different positions, move them to positions that I want them in. Uh, so, next, like I said, in the next episode, we will be tackling uh, the preseason. So, that's a lot of fun. We'll have to discuss what we're planning on doing with the team, as well as who we're getting rid of, as well as who's getting released, who's getting traded, stuff like that. We can only bring 53 people. Uh, anybody who's starting is more than likely safe. Anybody who's drafted besides the Galipa guy is probably safe. Safe. Anybody that was basically on the team as of last year is more than likely safe. Pat Pete did not actually go down as much as I thought he would. Normally, he doesn't come up with, like, any picks and simulations, so he drops down to, like, an 83. I'm not even kidding. You can test this out for yourself. But apparently, he's still at an 89, so he's still worth a damn on the team, which is awesome to see. Uh... The question is, what is Josh Jackson role now, especially with Jeffrey Okuda coming in? What is CGJ's role? What is, you know, Zach Brown's role as he comes in? What's Robert Quinn's role? You know, all these guys. What are we doing with Jordan Love? Uh, do we keep him for years on end and then trade him when his contract is finally up? Or do we see how Kyler Murray's doing? And if we don't like him, we sub Jordan Love in and say, go nuts, like, what are we doing at the running back position? What do we want to do? Is it going to be more of that RPO stuff that we were running last year, or is it going to be more of a downhill scheme? So, just really depends. Offensive line is still not looking all that great, but is looking better than last year as we have significantly upgraded. This is probably the most crowded position besides wide receiver right now, 
Because Hakeem Butler might not even make the team this year as a wide receiver, which is pretty weird to say the least. But other than that, guys, don't forget to like, subscribe, all the fun stuff, turn on post notifications, and I'll see you guys in the next video. If you guys have any suggestions, let me know for, for playbooks or for what we should do with the team. Thanks for watching. Peace.